In this final video, we're going to look at the new color adjustment effect. Uh, so in the module library on the filter tab, you'll find the channel swap and the hue saturation in there. We're also going to look at the image switch module, which allows us to switch between images on the timeline and uh, as well as the lens flare and how to make your own custom lens flares. And finally, there's a few workflow enhancements that have been made to the network view. So we're going to look at those as well. In this scene, I've got a character and a background. And I'm going to put a hue saturation module in, plug it in underneath the character. And if we go back across to the camera view here, uh, this is the OpenGL view, so I will render this. And he's in normal daylight colors here because I haven't changed anything in the hue saturation. So I'm just going to use the colorize section, which I find easier to use, uh, and click on this color swatch at the bottom to open up the, the color picker. So um, by default, uh, he has this desaturated red color, uh, but if I put it onto something else, you can see that the character updates with that as I go. And I could change this to any color I wanted uh, to colorize this character. So if I close that, um, you can see also that the all these fields are animatable. We can create function curves for each of them. So if I create a function curve for the hue, I can animate that over my 60 frames. And in the second keyframe, give it a value of about 24, somewhere down in the orange. And over time, that value will animate. And if I render that, you can see that the character goes from this dark green through the yellow and into the orange. So the next thing we're going to look at is the channel swap. Uh, this one's fairly simple. It just swaps red red, green, blue, and alpha channels for um, for red, green, blue, alpha channels, and a few others. So if I go back to the camera view, I'll just close that, in the properties panel, we've got the red, green, blue, and alpha channel, and each of these has a drop-down list containing red, green, blue, alpha, and some others. So this means we can swap these channels around, or we can turn them off or fully on, um, and replace them with other things. So let me turn let me turn the green channel off completely, full off. Um, and all we're left with is red and blue, which makes this uh, deep purple. Um, and likewise, I can turn something full on, uh, like this red channel. I'll turn that full on, and we've got a, a flaring out or a, a burning out of red. So this is just a matter of playing around with these channels and the combinations and finding what you need or what works for a particular scene. Okay, so let's go back to the network view here. Um, I'm going to unplug the channel swap and I'm going to show you the image switch. Uh, now the image switch allows you to choose, I'll just drag it from the module library into the network and plug it in. The idea is that the image switch um, you plug images, separate images, in there, and then you can choose which one to show. So, let's say I've I've worked on these colors, and I've got um, a hue saturation and a channel swap, um, and I want to show the first one for 20 frames and the second one for 40 frames. Um, and let me just grab another one that I prepared earlier, a color override as well. So I'm running this character through three separate colors, and I want a keyframe. I want him to change from from hue saturation, from, from channel swap to color override to hue saturation uh, over time. So um, in the switch properties, we go back to here. You can see that channel swap is is on at the moment, and that's because it's port index zero. I want to go back to the network and show you. Port 0 is on the far right, then port 1 is in the middle, and port 2 is uh, on the left. And they go from 0 upwards as you go from right to left. So if I select um, back in the layer properties, if I animate this, this property here and I say that on frame 20 I want it to switch to port 1, then it will go uh, on frame 20 this image will be shown, the, the color override. And so let me just uh, switch over to the camera view and show you what that looks like. Um, in the switch properties, 
I'll switch to port 1 and we can see that these are the colors I set up with the uh, color override module um, and that's the one that's being shown so I'm going to create a function curve on frame 1 create uh, it'll be on 0 so it'll be on that port then on frame 20 add a keyframe there and change this to port 1 and then we'll go along the timeline to frame 40 add another keyframe and change that value to 2 so we'll be on port 2 let me just go to double view you can see that as I scrub the timeline we go from the the channel swap module and then at frame 20 it changes to the color override module and I keep going along the timeline and at frame 40 we're now using the hue saturation module so that's really really handy for um, say a character walks into a room and turn and he turns the light on and he's got dark colors and light colors um, you could have the let me just unplug these you just plug the character in twice into the switch and then into one you have the dark colors and into the other one you have the light colors and then you just choose the frame at which to switch from one to the other and now let's talk about the new lens flare effect um, this is a very simple scene I've got set up here I've got a star field on night sky and just some uh, dark mountains in the at the bottom there and I'm gonna make a lens flare that goes across the scene uh, so if we go over to the module library the lens flare is on the filters tab like everything else we've spoken about so far and I'll take it out and plug it in on top of everything else um, and I'm going to go back to well first of all let's have a look at this module um, we've got two peg inputs the green inputs at the top on the middle and on the right um, and we've also got a drawing input um, so we'll have a look at those in a sec but let, for now let's have a look at the properties of the lens flare this is a pre-built lens flare um, and if I go to the properties of the lens flare we we'll see this is type 1 at the top we've got a lot of tabs across the top and uh, we'll have a look at what those are in a sec but um, for you've got two pre-built types you've got type 1 and if I go to type 2 you see this is the other pre-built one now the third type or the first in the list is the custom type and I'm going to select that and the other one disappears from the from the scene um, I'll go back to OpenGL view um, and now I'm going to add my own custom shapes in to this lens flare by plugging a, a drawing layer into this uh, top left port um, but I have sneakily created my own flares uh, previous to this and uh, I'm going to plug it in here now and you can see that a layer of frames appears in the timeline and I've got uh, frames 1 to 10 I've drawn 10 different shapes and uh, you'll you'll notice that the layer properties for the lens flare has 10 tabs for 10 different flares so it's important that the shapes the drawings are numbered 1 to 10 because we'll be referencing those numbers in the layer properties so go across to the X sheet and uh, I, you can see here that I did the second drawing for I swapped the second and first drawings um, so I'm going to select those right click and choose drawings rename by frame just so that every frame is labeled sequentially every drawing is labeled sequentially so that when comes when it comes time to adjust the lens flares I've got these drawing one is in flare one drawing two is in flare two drawing three is in flare three drawing four is, four is in flare floor, floor and so forth um, now let's have a look at my custom flare in the scene and whoa it looks crazy um, what I would like to do is re position reset all the positions because these that you see in the in the OpenGL view um, they aren't the order that I drew them in um, for example this big rainbow shape is actually the uh, the second drawing in the in the list so it shouldn't be appearing way down here and so what I'm going to do is the position I'm going to reset the positions well I'm going to renumber the positions so that they all make sense so drawing one is in position zero that's up here already uh, f drawing two 
is in position 2 which is way down here so I'm going to put in 0 0.2 and it, it appears back up the top actually I'll make that even closer 0 0.1 um, and that appears up closer to the top of the flare um, so flare 3 I want to put at 0 0.2 I'll move that across a bit further, 0 0.45. Flare 4, drawing 4, I want to put that at 0 0.75. I'll leave that where it is. Uh, flare 5, uh, 3, no, I'll put that at uh, 1.2. Uh, and that's the blue one. Flare 6, so I'm just going through, putting them all in, in order of position so that they're all in a sensible order in the tabs. Um, 1.4, flare 6, 1.5, flare 8, 2, flare 9, 2.3, and I'll make that 2.8. And flare 10, 2.9, right at the end. So now I think these are in the order that I want them. And now let's switch back to the network view. And I want to put a peg in the top right port. And I'm going to call this the swing peg. You'll see in a sec why I've done that, um, why I called it that. So swing peg, go back to the camera view. And with my move tool, if I now move this peg, uh, it's swinging the, the effect around. So um, it's looking good. It's moving at all. That's the cool thing about lens flares in Harmony is that all the movement, the proper movement is set up for you. You only need to put your, your, flare, your flare shapes in and attach a peg and away you go. Um, before I go too much further, I'm going to reposition the pivot point right at the center so it makes a bit of sense. Um, and one other cool thing about this is that you can keyframe this, um, the lens flare, uh, and the second key back here. Okay, and we've got a trajectory that we can... Um, that we can manipulate. So I'll put a pivot uh, control point on the trajectory. Trajectory. I do have a lot of trouble with that word sometimes. And yes, I can play. Now what is my, you know, this looks pretty, pretty nasty, this, um, this custom flare of mine. Uh, so what does it look like when it's rendered? Let's have a look. So there we go. Um, these are the colors I actually worked on. I don't know why it's showing up so garishly in the uh, in the OpenGL view. Um, but in the render view, these are the colors that I worked on and we've got a nice kind of uh, rainbow halo kind of spectral thing. And it works quite well. So that's how to add um, your custom flare types. Uh, if we go back to the global tab just briefly, uh, which is at the front, you've also got this brightness thing and that is the, the glow that you see. So if I turn that off, you can see the, the glow has been turned off. Um, so with that on, you can adjust the color of that. I can make it a red glow if I want to, or a bright green glow for a kind of Mars, uh, Martian kind of ship lens flare, um, as well as the alpha and uh, the intensity, which you can put uh, over 100. Um, you can go, let's say 120, uh, and it gets even brighter. So you can even animate that value to flare um, as the lens flare gets strongest or as it swings around. And one last thing before we move on is uh, the peg. Um, if we go back to the uh, network view, the middle peg is for positioning. So you'll notice that the, the lens flare mostly pivots from the center of the screen. So uh, if I go like this, it seems to be pivoting from around here somewhere. In fact, I, I noticed that if you have any of your flares positioned on position one, that will be fixed at the center of the screen. And it's a little bit distracting, I think. So let me just demonstrate. Uh, let's say flare five is currently on 1.2. If I put it on position one, 
and now if I swing that peg around you can see this middle this middle flare just doesn't move anywhere so uh, I like to keep the uh, the position just slightly off position one don't let it stay st stuck in the middle of the screen um, so back to the uh, network view I'm just going to add a peg into the middle and I'll call this one position peg so I've got the swing peg and the position peg and the middle peg uh, if I go back to the camera view and now I can move the whole flare around so if I want it to be a low lens flare in the scene say um, so that it's it's a rising sun or something and it comes up like this uh, I would put, use the position peg to have it low in the scene um, and then uh, and likewise I could have it high so that's what the center peg is for so next up we're just going to have a look at the workflow enhancements in the network view the new workflow enhancements for the network view make it easier to get around large networks uh, so up to now we've been getting around networks by the spacebar and also with this navigator in the uh, the bottom corner you pan the frame around to get around the network faster um, but they've added a new thing where if you hold down the Z key or the Z key um, you can see this uh, magnified preview uh, and this wherever you pan around in that magnified preview if you click that will center the network for you on that section so say if I want to go over here to this other this far group that's right on the edge I just press Z and uh, go over here and click and there is the group centered in the, the thing for me and that's really really handy uh, for getting around larger networks and there's a preference for this um, the size of this preview window this magnifying window uh, and if I go to the preferences with control U um, and I go to network I've got this magnifier multiple uh, width multiple so it's 5 out of 10 so it's half the size of the network so by default it's on 3 I've actually put it up to 5 but um, now if I hold down the Z key uh, we can see the magnifier is a little bit smaller and yes once you get used to it it's uh, very quick to get around the network that way um, now the other thing that's been included is the is a, a linking uh, function which allows you to link things if I want to link a, a module that's far away to the main scene composite previously I'd have to you know select the module and then pan down while holding holding the, the cable and plug it into where I want it uh, but now all you need to do is click the the output port of what you want to connect <clears throat> and then control click the module that you want to connect connect it to so I just control click the composite and instantly it creates that connection something else you may have noticed uh, in the previous videos is that whenever I go inside a group um, we've now got this arrow here that we can get back outside the group with uh, previously you would click that tiny little word top in the bottom left corner um, so this little this new button is uh, is a bit more intuitive and easier to hit uh, finally before we wrap up this series um, one last thing I think is worth a mention is spacebar panning in a timeline um, we can now hold down spacebar and pan up and down and across the timeline which um, I think I'm gonna love as we get into really big projects with lots of layers and and uh, long scenes and that wraps up this series I uh, hope you've enjoyed it and hope you found it useful see you later it has been my privilege.